Hey gang, welcome back to another episode of Man Time. Today uh, is 100 degrees, uh, or getting there very, very quickly. Um, it's still before noon, but uh, down here in Texas, you, you just never know what the weather, well, you do know the weather's going to be hot. Hot in the summertime until about October. Um, I, I, you know, doing the hay around here and stuff, I can cut, I've sometimes cut uh, my last cut into November. Um, so we've just got a, a really long summer season here and you got to take advantage of it right you've got all this stuff to do um, at, at your home at your um, land on your homestead and it's got to get done we can't wait till the uh, the weather gives us what we want and besides that men should be outside I, I don't know about you men but for me sitting indoors cooped up um, even the the video editing and and stuff like that I would rather be outside uh, regardless of what the temperature is what's going on um, I, I would rather have a heat stroke outside than be cool and comfortable inside doing anything really um, it, it's just not uh, not good for me and maybe you feel the same way but uh, yeah if you do uh, comment and uh, and Tell me how you like to uh, to be outside like me. But uh, yeah, so anyways, we're outside and I did something bad. I, I have a real problem. I have a real problem when it co comes to, uh, to good old tools. So I bought another AV model. This one is a, a top handle um, O2O AV. I was so impressed uh, with the O31 um, that, that I started looking for something, you know, just another AV steel chainsaw. And, uh, I got a really good deal on this one. Um, the, uh, condition was unknown as far as running. Um, the seller did say that it had spark and, um, and, and I've gone through and, and just kind of looked it over. Um, it looks like it's going to start and run, but, uh, the, uh, the carburetor most likely needs to be rebuilt. So, like any uh, good mechanic, um, I'm going to go ahead and take it completely apart and analyze what I've got here in this saw. Uh, I've done a little bit of messing around with it. I found out that, uh, that rewinding the pull chain is, uh, is an absolute nightmare, right? Um, once you take this cover plate off of there, the um, uh, spring unspools for the uh, for the pull chain and to only the only way you can get that re-sprung in there uh, is to uh, is to take the handle off and wind it outside of this housing well half in and half out I'll, I guess I'll show it to you here in a minute when I have to do it again but uh, it, it, it's just a nightmare so um, yeah I'm gonna go through uh, all the internal parts of it here while I've got it disassembled and uh, that way one, I know exactly how to do it again, right? If something happens in the field, I've got a feel for all these internal parts that could uh, have possibly gone wrong or broke or whatever. Um, and, and two, I know exactly the condition that all of the internal parts are in when I go to take it into the field and run it. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. Let's, uh, let's jump into it. Take apart another Stilo uh, 020 AV. And welcome to man time. I just I just love old tools, and I love old tools that work well. So uh, I had such good luck with the uh, the O31, um, and, and here again you've got all metal construction on all the different parts and pieces here. Uh, yeah, I did uh, after I made the purchase. Of course, kind of an impulse buy here. Um, after I, after I made the purchase, I kind of read up on it, and uh, there were some reviews saying it was kind of finicky and um, kind of a nightmare to take apart and put back together and stuff. So, we'll see. Um, nice, straight, uh, nice straight bar on it. I need to clean up a little couple spots here. There's some heat affected zones, um, and there's, there's no roller in the front here. So it's kind of interesting, but this particular uh, this particular model has uh, 
has a 3 8 chain as well. So I've got uh, you know quite a few 3 8 chains kicking around here. I can use some of those to, uh, to replace this one. This one doesn't actually look like it's in too bad a shape though. Just a quick sharp, and this looks like it's probably a 3 8 but it's got the uh, it's got the smaller teeth on it. So I'll have to use a smaller smaller file for it. All right, uh, let's see here. I want to I want to take this off and uh, and check the clutch out. Make sure the clutch is good. Also want to take the muffler off and get a look in there at the piston. On this side, I'm going to have to completely take this side cover off to get to the carburetor. So. We'll, uh, we'll get started here and maybe that'll go kind of fast. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I've always really enjoyed the outdoors and I was fortunate growing up in the, uh, in the Black Hills of South Dakota to have an abundance of, uh, of outdoors and pine trees and places to go and roam and explore. Um, yeah. Just uh, just a whole lot of fun in the uh, on the weekends. You know, my friends and I we would get together and we would go out into the into the woods and go four wheeling. And uh, boy, we just had a whole lot of fun. We couldn't wait for those weekends to get in to the Jeep and the Toyota and the, you know all the different vehicles that uh, that people had. And, uh, and get out into the great outdoors. Ooh, that sucker is tight. That is tight. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so growing up, you know, my adult life, um, I, I was always kind of searching for that feeling of, uh, of being in the outdoors and uh, and getting out and doing things and I knew that I wanted to have some land um, to live on so that way I could be in the outdoors and enjoy the outdoors and uh, it's just something that's in my in my DNA I guess um, I can't help but just want to be outside all the time yeah, one thing I found on the uh, 031, um, basically every nut and bolt on there uh, had uh, had wanted to work its way loose, and so I was having to um, having to basically lock tight every nut and bolt on there to keep it together. But um, let's see here. I've got so this whole assembly should slide out from here, and it looks like just Allen heads holding it on here. So there's been some talk recently about uh, bar envy and uh, East Coast versus West Coast bar size, and uh, I just like to weigh in on that a little bit um, because here in Texas it's not so much about bar size as it is uh, as it is getting the work done and doing the work. And I was just looking at the weather, and uh, on the East Coast, New York State was. Uh, barely reaching into the 70s yesterday. Uh, up there in Washington State, uh, highs in the uh, mid-60s. I'm out here doing the work in 100 plus degrees. So, let's see some of you East Coast 
or West Coast sissies come to Texas with those big bars and try to run them in, uh, in the weather we have down here, right? So, anywho, uh, let's look at our clutch. Looks like our uh, clutch is pretty good other than just some surface rust. Um, oh no, I am missing, I am missing a clutch plate altogether there. Ah, oh, son of a gun, I'm going to need to order a clutch. Wow. Yeah, there's like a, uh, like a brake shoe type uh, centered metal impregnated pad that's supposed to be on that clutch and it's, it's just completely gone. Thank God for eBay, right? I'm looking for that post haste. All right, now I've got to try to figure out how to run that clutch off of there. I don't think a spanner wrench is going to get it, but the uh, the sprocket looks really good. But yeah, that that clutch is just not going to fly. Son of a gun! Oh well. All right, let's uh, let's get into this carburetor. <laughs> 